The next thing that I want to make is something to support material on the right hand side of the mitre station and it needs to be something that either flips up or is movable so that it doesn't get in the way because I will still need access to come around here and use the bandsaw. My previous mitre station had a flip up table that was a simple construction, it was on some hinges and it flipped up and I propped it up with a piece of wood and that worked well but the only problem with it was that I was a little too lazy sometimes to flip it up and prop it up because if you're cutting one piece of wood it just doesn't seem worthwhile. So the second option is to make something mobile and I've got this little space over to the left hand side of the bandsaw that's just dead space really, I'm not going to be walking there or standing there. So I think I'm going to make some sort of narrow cabinet that's on wheels that I can just wheel over to the right hand side of the motor station and it doesn't really need to be exactly the same height as this. It can be a centimetre or so lower because really it's just there to catch the pieces that I'm cutting. I also need somewhere to store my clamps which at the moment are just piled up here in the corner and my F clamps which are over here on a rack which I always find is a little bit too high to reach. So I thought why not combine the two requirements and make something that holds my clamps and also supports material on the right hand side of the mitre station. So the unit needs to be on wheels which means I will need 75mm at the bottom for the casters that I have. And for the overall height I know that the mitre station is 960mm so I'm going to use 950mm. And I want it to be about 750mm wide and 280mm deep. Material wise, having built the table saw stand and the mitre station, I'm quite surprised at how much scrap material I've still got left over. I've got a couple of sheets of block board over here and some more block board offcuts over here, so I think I'm going to use this to make the cabinet. I started by cutting the side panels, ripping them to width on the table saw and cutting them to length on the mitre saw. I've got an old piece of melamine here, this is a side panel from a kitchen unit and I wanted my cabinet to be 750mm wide and this measures 763 so I'm going to use this to make a top for the cabinet. I just need to rip it down to the right depth. I'm going to drill some pocket holes in the side panels that will be used to attach the top later. I've got the unit upside down and I've cut this piece to the length of the inside of the cabinet and I can screw this in from the sides to make the cabinet a little bit more rigid. Unfortunately I don't have a big enough block board panel to make a bottom panel for the cabinet but I have two pieces so I'm going to join these with the biscuit jointer. I've cut this piece to length to fit inside the cabinet and this is going to hold my F clamps. So I'm just going to mark up the dimensions. I'm going to leave three centimeters in between each clamp and each slot is going to be eight millimeters wide. I drilled holes at the end of where each slot would be using an eight millimeter drill bit. Then I cut the slots on the bandsaw.
I did some filing just to clean up the edges. I offered up a clamp into the rack to get an idea of where I wanted to position it and marked it up with a pencil. Then I drilled a couple of pilot holes on each side and screwed it in from the sides. Once the glue had dried on the biscuit jointed panel, I could then cut that to length and attach it to the bottom of the unit. Then I added the casters with drywall screws and some brass washers. I'm going to put a straight edge on the mitre saw and I can check that the cabinet is the right height. And that looks good because it just slides under the straight edge. So it's lower than this and that's what I was hoping for. At the moment these clamps will rock around a little bit when the trolley is moved around. Some of them rock more than others. So I'm going to add a couple of strips of wood at the back which will stop them from rocking about so much and these will also be a useful place to hold my spring clamps. So I think I'll have one about there. I've got this piece where I want it and I've cut some simple brackets out of some scrap plywood to hold these pieces in place. I added a second strip of wood near the bottom to help stop the longer clamps from rocking. I keep a lot of these large bulldog clips in the workshop because they make great miniature clamps. For these long reach C clamps, I traced the internal shape onto a scrap of plywood, cut them out on the bandsaw, refined the shape and rounded the edges on the belt sander. and glued and pinned them to the sides of the cabinet. Then I used a thin scrap of plywood to trace the same shape again but this time slightly longer, cut and shaped them in the same way and glued them to the front which formed a kind of hook to hold the clamps in place. The next thing that I want to do is to mount some OSB onto this wall and then I can mount my tools onto the wall. This is the OSB that I'm going to use and I've given it three coats of white paint. There are a few obstacles to work around such as this socket and this light fixture up here and I've taken some measurements so I'll just cut this out. I pinned the sheet of OSB in place temporarily with the brad nailer and then added screws. I 
So for this tool wall, I wanted to hang things that would not protrude too much as the walkway between the wall and the bench was not very wide and I didn't want to be knocking things off as I walked by. I just used drywall screws into the OSB to hold everything. It's simple and it had served me well for the past two years, nothing ever fell off and I didn't see any reason to waste time making something more advanced such as a French cleat system and if I ever want to change things around it's easy just to fill the old holes and drill new ones. I added some decorators caulk just to hide any gaps. And finally, a lot of people commented on my motor station videos asking why I didn't insulate the walls behind it. And the main reason why is because adding insulation and plasterboard means I would lose about 10 centimeters of depth, the space in between the uprights in an area of the workshop where I really need all of the space I can get. There were a few areas though where I didn't need the additional space, such as the back of this shelf where I have my power tools stored. So basically I added insulation where I felt that I could without compromising the space too much. <laughs> 